Number 45. Determine the number of moles and the mass requested for each reaction in exercise 4.44. And then we have letter D out of those exercises. So in this case, we need to find the number of moles and the mass of water formed by the combustion of 20.0 kilograms of acetylene, which is C2H2, in an excess of oxygen. Okay. This one's interesting. I like it. So... The first thing I see is that I know that this is going to be a stoichiometry problem, not just because we're in stoichiometry world, right? But just notice the trend here. They gave you one piece of information, right, of a certain compound. In this case, it's acetylene, C2H2, and we're looking for information of another compound. So when you see that idea, we have to do stoichiometry, which is just a fancy word for saying, let's do some uh, dimensional analysis. Let's do some ratios with the balanced equation. But where's the balanced equation? I don't see it. Do you see it? Ugh, we got to make it. So this balanced equation, we've done tons of balancing as of right now, if you guys have been on the playlist. So this will be kind of like a refresher. If you do need more help with learning how to balance an equation or learning how to make an equation from scratch, go check out the playlist. But as of right now, you can pause the video and see if your equation matches mine. But I'm just going to kind of rush through this one. Not rush, but you, you get what I mean. Go a little faster. Okay. So we want to find out the moles in the mass of water formed. So that means that this has to be a product by combustion. So that's important. We should know what the general combustion formula is. Here is my hydrocarbon. It's hydrogen and carbon, hydrocarbon, C2H2. And this is in oxygen, right? So I have C2H2 plus O2, and that will yield or produce water, right? But remember, for combustion, if you started off with carbon you have to end with CO2. There you go. And remember, the, the overall combustion formula is a hydrocarbon plus oxygen will lead you to carbon dioxide and water. It does not matter, you know, whether these are flip-flopped or whatever. They just both have to be on the product side. But now just writing this equation, we, we have to go a little bit more. We have to make sure that it's balanced. So I'm just going to quickly just run through this and see if this is balanced. I see that I have to do a little bit of work here because I have two carbons here and only one carbon here. So I'm going to put a two in front of here. The hydrogens look good, right? I have two hydrogens and two hydrogens. Uh, but the oxygens, oh boy. I have a total of four oxygens plus one is five. So remember, we've done examples with, ooh, we've done examples with fractions, right? I would first put a 5 over 2 over here, and then I'm going to multiply everything by 2 to get rid of that fraction. So technically, I will have two of these. I will have 5 O2. I will have two H2Os, and then I'll have four CO2s. So this one was a little bit of a challenge, but... Once again, we've done tons of problems, so you can always go and back and check it. Yeah? I'm just looking at this just to make sure that everything is balanced here, but everything is good to me. Okay. We have the balanced equation. Great. Next thing I like to do is I just like to categorize what's going on here. I will put what I have under the compound that it belongs to. So I have 20.0 kilograms of acetylene. So I'm going to go to acetylene and I'm just going to say, okay, I got 20.0 kilograms of this. And they're asking for the moles and the mass of water formed. So I go over to water and I just say, okay, I need to know the moles and I need to know the mass. And remember, the mass is grams. So they're asking for two separate uh, answers here. But this will kind of give you an idea of what we were talking about before, where I have a number for one compound and they're asking for information for another compound. Okay, stoichiometry. We need to know the flow, and the flow is this. I color-coded this for you guys. 
The red or the A is the starting material that you have a number for. Not necessarily a reactant, but literally the number that they gave you. So in this case, the reds are going to be C2H2, and the blues are what you want to go to. In this case, the questions all lead to water, so we're going to go this way. But just remember that it's grams to moles to moles to grams. Grams to moles to moles to grams, okay? So my suggestion is if you do have a quiz or test, write this little schematic on the top of your paper just so that you have it to visualize when you work through your test or quiz. Now I'm just going to cater this to this specific question. Now there's a thing here already. Do you see it guys? We start off with grams in this little schematic, but they gave me kilograms. Ay. The first thing we got to do is we got to convert kilograms into grams. But we know how to do that, right? Kilograms, two grams, all you have to do is take that number and multiply by 1,000. Similarly, you could just take the decimal and move it three spots to the right and just fill in your uh, decimals, or your zeros, right? So this would be the same thing as 20,000 grams. So that's the number that I'm gonna put down here. We have 20,000 grams of A, AKA C2H2. I'm gonna go to moles of not A anymore, specifically C2H2. Then I'm gonna convert into what I want. In this case, the B is water. So I'm gonna first find out the moles of B, and then I go to grams of B, AKA grams of H2O. Cool. We now have the little handy dandy cheat sheet for our uh, problem. So let's get started. Start with what you got. So in this case, I got 20,000 grams, and I'll color code this. So we're still with the red guys, C2H2. And all this is is just one big conversion factor, right? So we've done tons of conversion factors in dimensional analysis. So all we do is we multiply by a ratio, right? and work with the units first and then double back and put in the numbers. So in this case, you don't want grams of C2H2, that goes on the bottom. So grams of C2H2 on the bottom. And then just look to see what we're going to next. We wanna to go to moles of C2H2. Okay, so the units are there. Now we just gotta figure out what are the numbers that go on the top or the bottom. Well. We've done this conversion. Grams of one compound to moles of the same compound is the periodic table conversion. So PT, periodic table. So you gotta get those periodic tables out. And remember, when you're using the periodic table, you always have one mole of that compound. So that's a standard. The one goes with the mole. The actual mass goes with the grams. So now I gotta go to my periodic table and just calculate what the mass is of two carbons and two hydrogens, and we add them together. So I got 1.008 for my hydrogen times two, and then plus 12.01 times two uh, for the two carbons. And I get roughly 26 point, hold on, let me just move this over a little bit. 26 point, what is it? Zero, three, six. Okay, everything is accounted for here, so we can cancel the units. We cancel the units, not the numbers. The numbers we're gonna use at the end. Now, try to break the habit of solving for every single conversion factor in one shot. I know you guys can do this. Some students get a little scared by doing multiple conversions at once, but I got you, all right? So since we're not at an answer that they want, I'm just gonna keep flowing with it. Right, we want to get to moles, at least moles of H2O, which is this answer right here. We just found this, right? You see how this, this matches with this? So I'm going to keep flowing. Just do your new ratio. Multiply by a conversion factor. Work with the units first. We don't want this unit, so that goes on the opposite side. And look over to see who's next. In this case, now I'm gonna switch colors. I want mole of H2O. The units are there. Now, what are the numbers? Well, this is the only thing that's new, 
right? A mole of one compound to a mole of another compound, the only thing that they have in common is this balance equation. Both of them are in the balance equation. So I have to use the balance equation to get the numbers for this conversion. And the numbers that you get on the balance equation are the, uh, the coefficients, the big numbers in the front. Only pay attention to the compounds that you care about. There's going to be more compound, uh, yeah, more compounds in the balance equation than what you care about. So you only pick what you need. We need H2O and C2H2. So for C2H2, I see that I have a two in front. So I'm going to put a two down here. And for the H2O, I also see that I have a two in front. So I'm going to put a two up here. This is one of the answers that they wanted, right? Mole of water, mole of H2O. So now I'm going to say equal to, and the units cancel, so we're good. Now two divided by two is one, so technically we don't really have to do that because this will cancel, right? But it was just good to show for dimensional analysis purposes. You can add that, you know, you can do the math with that. You'll get the same answer as me. Anything in the denominator is division. So I'm going to say 20,000 divided by 26.036. So I get 768 moles of H2O. That's a lot of moles. But that kind of makes sense because we have a lot of mass. We have kilograms. Now just know that um, with sig figs, if your teacher or professor is is crazy for sig figs, which I am not, right? Um, the number that was in the beginning of the problem, the number of sig figs in the beginning, which is three here, needs to be the number of sig figs at the end. All your conversion factors have no weight when doing sig figs. Okay, so we got the first answer. Now we have to find the second one, but that's just flow into the next thing, right? From a mole of water, I could find out the mass or the grams. So I'm just going to pick up where I left off, 686, uh, bleh, 768 moles of water. We're going to do another conversion, so multiply by that ratio. Do the units first. This goes on the bottom. What you want goes on the top, so grams of H2O. And now this is a mole and a gram conversion, just like the first one was a mole and a gram conversion. And when we did that, we used the periodic table. So I have to use the periodic table again. And remember, what did we say last time? When we're using the periodic table, we only have one mole. So wherever the mole word is, you put a one there. The mass is the gram component on the periodic table. So I'm going to my periodic table. I got two hydrogens, and then I got a 16. I got one oxygen. So my answer is 18.016, you know, without rounding. Now I can cancel my units, and it looks like it's just a straight multiplication. So 768 times 18.016. And I need three sig figs, so I'm going to use uh, scientific notation here. 1.38 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. A lot of grams, a lot of moles, but that's okay because we had a lot of mass here. And that's moles, of, uh, grams of water. And that's your second answer. So just to put this into context, what this basically means is that if you started with 20 kilograms, AKA 20,000 grams of acetylene, you would produce either 768 moles or you would produce 1.38 times 10 to the fourth grams of water. That's basically what it means. It's kind of the same thing as saying like if you had 20 cups of, cook of flour, right? Just envision this as flour, you would produce whatever it is, 768 cookies or something. It's the same type of idea. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know in the comments if this helped you or not. Subscribe to the channel, which will help us out. We're almost at 10K, which is awesome. Thank you so much for your support, guys. You guys rock. 
I hope you all are having a great day. Keep studying hard, and I will see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.